and this is actually my um, fourth uh, Blackboard TLC, uh, consecutive Blackboard TLC um, since 2016. And I consider myself as a creative person, and I have, uh, because of this passion of mine, I have created a couple of um, H5P and Storyline contents and deployed them into um, a variety of learning um, learn line units at our learning management system. Um, having said that, I'd like to acknowledge my colleague, Dr. Kashmira Dave. She has been uh, very helpful in guiding me in this um, endeavor, in this uh, pilot project. Having said that, in this presentation, I will share with you our experience in um, evaluating interactive content uh, using the TPAC model. And in this pilot project, we seek empirical and theoretical answers to um, questions around uh, current practices regarding the use of e-learning authoring tools. And of course, we'll also share some of our findings and potentially you'll have, um, you'll see some of the examples um, of the interactive contents we developed with um, the lecturers at CDU, and of course, what we intend to do after that, because this is a fairly new initiative at CDU. Now, TPAC stands for Technological Pedagogical Content Knowledge, so it highlights the, the complex relationship among the three forms of knowledge, and that is uh, pedagogy, content, and technology. So in other words, or to put it simply, it's um, another framework that, um, that is aimed at developing the lecturer's uh, digital fluency in the context of teaching and learning. And in this pilot trial, in this pilot TPAC evaluation at CDU, we have adopted and adapted um, a checklist, uh, an appraisal checklist um, initially conceptualized by Handal and his team. So they created the checklist for appraising um, uh, apps for mathematics education, and we customized, we customized that checklist to make it more meaningful to um, our appraisal of interactive content. Now, in this um, customized checklist, we included questions around um, the task structure, um, whether the interactive content is uh, classified uh, for explorative purpose, whether it's for productivity, or whether it's for instructive purposes. And we also ask questions around um, whether the students um, are involved in terms or in view of uh, Bloom's taxonomy. So we ask the lecturers how um, they involve the students in terms of cognition. And we also had questions around um, pedagogy. In this, um, in this set of questions, we also consulted um, established learning paradigms to make meaning out of, of the responses from uh, the lecturers. And finally, we also had questions around operational issues. Having said that, um, like I mentioned, we have questions, specific questions in mind in this pilot uh, TPAC evaluation. So first, what are the current practices around the use of e-learning authoring tools in supporting the diverse learning needs of CDU students? And what are the key considerations in the development of an instructor toolkit for designing interactive contents based on insights drawn from the TPAC appraisal? Now, these are some of our findings. So at this point, our sample size is uh, 12, and we are aware that it's a very small sample size and it might have a limited influence to uh, the outcomes of this uh, research or this inquiry. Um, so for this sample size, 12 of the interactive contents are deployed in VET units, whereas the other four are deployed in higher ed units. And if you take a, take a look at uh, the AQF levels of these units, most of them are certificate three, for diploma and um, bachelor degree. So when we say interactive content, we're actually referring to four types. So one is H5P, the other one is Storyline, the other one is Biodigital, and finally, Interactive 360. So H5P, um, just to describe what this tool is about, it's an HTML5-based um, authoring tool with um, with, that allows lecturers to create a variety of content types and rich media, whereas Storyline has a reputation for um, building drag and drop quizzes and branching scenarios. Via Digital, on the other hand, is um, meant for creating 3D visualization of hum the human anatomy. 
And finally, uh, Interactive 360, specifically Panatour in our case, is uh, a set of images that was stitched together to create a spherical view of the real environment. And students can interact with it by clicking on certain hotspots, creating um, an, immersion, an immersive experience for the students. Now, these are just some of the articulate storyline uh, contents I developed and deployed across different units at CDU. And this is an example of a word search game, which I customized. So basically, I um, adopted a template shared by Adriana Bertolani um, on eLearning Heroes, which is an articulate online community, and customized this, um, this interactive game and deploy it into the uh, Diploma of Children's Services. So as you can see right here, um, students are expected to search the keywords that describe how a child uh, feels when they feel connected or when they feel belong. So these are just some of the H5P contents I created for the Diploma of Children's Services and um, uh, Diploma of Nursing. So these examples are course presentations with interactive quizzing, it has drag and drop elements as well. It has um, fill in the missing words, um, drag the words, etc. So this is an example of biodigital, whereby um, uh, the different layers of epidermis are illustrated and students are uh, um, given the opportunity to interact with it by orbiting or panning um, the 3D model so you can uh, read the label, and it gives the student um, an immersive experience as well, or um, the opportunity to simulate uh, the skin structure. And finally, this is another example of an interactive content that I worked, that, um, that my colleague over here, um, Sam Sainer, and my other colleague, Zach, and the innovative, innovative media production studio at Charles Darwin University has, um, oh, have developed. So as you can see right here, um, they use a 360 camera to take pictures of um, a forest area on CDU campus um, in Casharina in Darwin. And we, they stitched it together to create that spherical view. And when students uh, click on the hotspots, um, images will pop up and it will con contain more information about the plant species because the, ultimately the objective of this interactive content is to get the students uh, to start thinking about the different plant species and the, the different plant types and um, be able to identify the changes that occur to the, to the plants as, they go, as the environment goes through seasonal changes. And these seasonal changes are classified according to the Larrakia um, calendar. So there, there are six uh, seasons in the Larrakia calendar. And uh, another function in the 360, um, in this interactive 360 is that there is a map. So it gives um, the students a sense of the location where the plant um, can be found. So from a theoretical point of view, so we think that this type of interactive content gives the student an opportunity in an active mode of learning instead of just being a passive learner receiving information from the interactive content. And that's from the theoretical lens of constructivism. Now, so now that we have identified the interactive contents we evaluated, we, again, we asked the lecturers, would you consider these interactive contents whether it's meant for explorative purpose, whether it's for productivity or instructive, and we found out that 63% of these um, interactive contents are for inter instructive purpose. And by that, we, um, Handal defined this concept as contents designed for practicing drill exercises to let the students um, uh, practice their retrieval um, or receptive skills. Whereas the other two uh, were classified, or the other interactive contents were classified as explorative or meant for productivity. Now, we had a series of questions around um, the interactive contents classified as explorative content, and this is what we found out. So, so we, we, we now know that, based on the, the data we've gathered, uh, most of the interactive contents have elements 
of ambiguity and uncertainty fostering personal investigation. So like I said, uh, from the con um, theoretical lens of constructivism, so the student, when given that opportunity to, to unpack certain ambiguity from the interactive content, it, they become at the driver's seat of their learning journey. But then again, one of the purposes of this TPAC evaluation of interactive contents at CDU is for us to be able to identify uh, key areas of improvement so, so that when we uh, create or improve um, the intera interactive content as we move from Blackboard Learn based navigation to Blackboard Learn uh, Ultra experience in courses, we know what sort of um, um, changes to make when we make when we try to develop a, a compatible version of that interactive content for Blackboard Ultra um, in courses. So we found out that um, not many of the interactive contents allow students to enter their own data and observe changes in their model. So we're talking about explorative contents over here. So that's an area for improvement. And in terms of instructive contents, we generally know that um, most of these inter interactive contents provide appropriate feedback to students, um, which is a good thing. I think that's a strong point um, in terms of formative learning. So it has a variety of, um, it has a meaningful um, and it fosters engagement and it involves students um, in terms of problem solving. However, we found out that not many of these interactive contents we sampled um, contain a variety of different um, exercises or activities. And by that we mean most of these interactive contents contain perhaps just a set of multiple choice questions, if not maybe just matching type, true or false. So that is a challenge for us and I guess we will um, use this information when we uh, try to develop new versions of the interactive contents for uh, Blackboard Learn um, Ultra in courses. Having said that, um, as mentioned earlier, we asked questions around um, uh, cognitive involvement. And we found out that most interactive contents uh, assess students' uh, skills or receptive skills. And as, as you take a look at this uh, stacked uh, bar chart, as you move higher to the Bloom's taxonomy pyramid, um, the orange as shown um, which represents always, uh, which is the response provided to us in the checklist, um, it becomes lower. And that's because um, in, in view of Bloom's taxonomy, um, knowledge is uh, a precondition to be able to put skills and abilities into practice. And I'd like to um, also mention uh, the point that was shared by Carol in, in the Academic uh, Adoption Day workshop, that um, even though, as you can see, create is higher than evaluate and analyze. And that's because um, um, the lower order thinking skills are subsumed in the higher order thinking skills when we looked at um, these type of interactive contents. And that's the perception of the lecturer. Now, so we've asked questions around um, gener general pedagogical issues. And we found out that most interactive contents give students control over their learning, but one key response stood out for us in terms of pedagogy. So that is um, about collaborative learning. So most of our um, interactive contents were designed for uh, online mode of learning or individual uh, work because most of our students are taking um, the units online or, for, or most of them are enrolled externally. But then again, some of the, res some of the lecturers we interviewed picked up on this and they said that, well, having or designing interactive contents for collaborative learning purposes will help um, or will enhance the learning experience of uh, their students. And we've consulted a variety of um, academic literature or readings on that and this is what we found out, that from the theoretical lenses of you know, constructivism and connectivism, collaborative learning uh, allows students to um, gain knowledge in terms of, let's say, when they interact with their peers in addressing, let's say, uh, a problem. Um, they manage to transfer tacit knowledge through that social um, interaction. And if they work on something as a product, they externalize that knowledge. 
And another point that we picked up from the academic literature is that collaborative learning can potentially address issues around isolation. So Stub read this um, in her book in 2011, that was published in 2011. Uh, isolation is a common um, issue for um, adult learning or when learning online. So again, um, I'd like to also pick up on the point that was shared by Carol in the academic adoption workshop that of course when designing interactive contents, uh, we also need to think about constructive alignment. So just because it's um, innovative or just because it's uh, something new, it doesn't mean that we always have to adopt it. So having said that, in, in our perspective, we think that it, when designing interactive contents, we need to make sure that this innovative uh, product or innovative content has to align with the other components of the unit, such as the learning, the intended learning outcomes, other activities and assessments. And in fact, we've captured that in the six key principles of learning um, at CDU. So um, lecturers at CDU are expected to ensure that interactive contents um, lead to the students achieving the intended learning outcomes. Now, in terms of operational issue, we can see that um, not many of the interactive contents um, let students alter the settings to customize um, the content to their needs. And I think this is another key area for improvement. And we think that if interactive contents let the students alter the settings, um, it provides the opportunity for us to support um, adaptive learning. And looking forward, we, ca we, we are confident that with tools like H5P and Storyline and even Panatour, we can definitely support adaptive learning because it, these tools contain uh, functions for um, branching scenarios. So um, at this point, there's one particular lecturer who has um, adopted branching scenarios in her interactive content. And this one in particular is a storyline uh, developed by Sim Cordell, Zachary Watt, and the Innov Innovative Media Production Studio at Charles Darwin University. In this uh, particular uh, storyline, um, students are expected to, um, to learn the seven principles of interpretation. And after that, they have to look at um, uh, three examples of uh, story share that was captured in the booth in the Darwin Military Museum. And here comes um, Andrew Spears um, serving as an expert. And if you ask him a question by clicking on the question on the list, he will provide you the expert opinion whether the, um, whether the person sharing the story is exaggerating some facts. And as you can see right here, if you don't interact with the content, Andrew Spear is probably gonna fall asleep. I'm, I, and I hope I'm not sending him to boredom. So anyway, so that's just an example of a, a storyline with um, branching scenario. So we want to see more of that um, when we apply or when we um, uh, develop more interactive contents for um, other units. Now, we found out in this TPAC appraisal that most interactive content, well, actually all of them, all of, the, all of the interactive contents in the sample were designed for formative learning. And we've consulted a variety of academic uh, literature and readings about that, and we feel we are on the right track because um, because for because of a variety of reasons. So let me just talk about some points over here. Um, so we are aware that all of the interactive contents are designed for formative assessments, but somehow some of the lecturers we interviewed um, express openness in, in using this interactive contents for um, summative purpose, but then this is a very debatable um, area. Um, because of some issues around securing, you know, online exams. And at this point, we know that H5P and Storyline don't connect with tools like um, Respondus Lockdown Browser and Monitor to, to uh, preserve the integrity of the summative assessment. And of course, we have to be conscious about the TESWA guidelines around, you know, the integrity of summative assessments and ASCO audit. Um, so having said that, um, Despite the fact that we're not using it for summative assessment, we feel that uh, we are on the right track because this is what the literature or the readings are telling us, that um, 
if you allow the students to interact with the content multiple times, it gives them the opportunity to uh, learn from the feedback. For example, if um, a student provides um, a correct response, but then with low confidence, that feedback will allow them to, to know what they already know and know what they still don't know. And if they reattempt the interactive content um, multiple times, they can refocus their attention on the things that they need to work on. So that's, and that creates a metacognitive effect um, uh, in the student's learning. And of course, we've also looked at um, the ANU coffee course on quiz design, recommending that uh, in our context, interactive content should always be designed for low stakes testing. And another point I'd like to share when we reviewed these readings is that technology does not have formative effects on learning, but then it's the way the tools are designed or integrated in teaching and learning practices. Now, so moving to um, what we've learned from this TPAC appraisal at CDU, so we are aware again that the sample size is uh, really small. So what we intend to do from this point is to increase the sample size and be able to triangulate the data we gathered by looking at the Blackboard um, Learn Report, Learn Line Unit Reports, and look at the student feedback because um, the data we have right now is about the lecturer's perception. So we want to make sure that um, whatever we um, develop for the students are meaningful for them in terms of their learning journey. And we also realized that the current TPAC checklist do not seem to talk about um, cogn the cognitive load theory that was uh, pr um, conceptualized or studied by uh, Sweller. So again, maybe perhaps when we move forward from here, we will um, revise that checklist and include questions around cognitive load theory to ensure that the bells and whistles don't create extraneous loads on learning. And at the same time, we also realized that we have looked at the interactive contents in isolation and in view of constructive alignment, perhaps we should look at the unit level um, as a whole to ensure that these interactive contents aligned with the uh, intended learning outcomes. And one of the purposes of this TPAC appraisal is to develop a, a toolkit for designing interactive contents um, designed or meant for lecturers because um, as I, I've mentioned earlier, most of the interactive contents, specifically the storyline or the H5P, there are, they are considered like minimum viable products. So we want to raise the bar and let um, help the lecturers um, explore a bit more by using the other complex content types in H5P and storyline and perhaps um, emulate the example that um, Sam and her team has um, created for the Diploma of Conservation Land uh, Management. And we also want to pick up on um, the fact that Flash, the support for Flash will, will, will end in 2020. So we want to make sure that those storyline contents are compatible, uh, even though support for Flash uh, will, will end in 2020. And if, more importantly, we want to make sure that when we um, uh, guide the lecturers in developing interactive contents um, in the future, we want to make sure that these new materials will be compatible with uh, Blackboard Learn uh, Ultra in courses. So as a final, um, okay, so before maybe I conclude this session, uh, so this is just an example of uh, one of the uh, visualization that we intend to include um, in the toolkit. So this is uh, a relationship wheel of the different content types of H5P that are designed for adaptive or immersive um, learning. And how does that, how does, or how do those con content types relate to the task structure defined by Handal and his team? And so let me leave you this um, um, thought with you. So when we reviewed a, a variety of um, literature, um, so this is what we think is important, uh, uh, an important learning point in this TPAC appraisal that dimensions of technologies such as speed, storage, capacity processing, communication, construction, and representation are inseparable from pedagogical conditions to allow moments of contingency to emerge, creating a conversational series of 
iterative process for reflection, revisions and actions, practice in the VLE. Again, thank you for attending this session and I hope you learned something from, from our TPAC appraisal at CDU. So at this point, I'm happy to um, take some questions, if there's any. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, this is just not my work alone. Um, thank you. I, I, <laughs> I acknowledge um, the guidance that um, my colleague Kashmir Dave has provided me. She has been very helpful in um, guiding me through um, the thinking process behind it. Yeah. And of course, um, Sam over there, she's um, the lecturer for CLM. And she has been um, doing innovative work to, in to ensure that the learning journey of, their, of her students will be um, of top quality. <laughs> um, I did just have a question around um, development timelines for some of the languages. Like, did you put some time off for the video? Well, I think I will pass that question. For example, for the Interactive 360, I think I will pa pass that question to Sam. She'll be in a better position to share with you more information about the timelines. So, uh, because that actually is the end of the year, that we've still got one more to add on. So, we did the minimum one product. So, we started out, I think, launched it in only three seasons, I think. And the idea is that we can do one to add over time. Um, so, I guess, go out there, please keep out. Um, the other thing is that we have to come back and look at the hot spots. Anyone else? Well, we are uh, out of time, but uh, if you just join me in thanking Nigel. Thank you very much. much.